everyone, it's Seth Rudetsky. I'm doing auditioning masterclasses in New York uh, every Tuesday. And I thought I would share with you, my Playbill viewers, the five biggest mistakes I've seen because I've been playing auditions, um, no joke, since 1986, Equity Library Theater. So I've seen, I've seen a lot of auditions. And these are the mistakes I see over and over again. These are, a lot of these are for 16 bars. So these are, let's say, the biggest 16 bar mistakes I see. First of all, your 16 bars have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's gotta be, it's gotta be literally like a complete song, but within 16 bars. You, when you give these kind of like half songs that have a clanky ending, it's sort of like, I'm just an ensemble person that kind of just picked out some weird music. Instead of being like, I'm gonna be a lead and here's my amazing song. It's 16 bars, but it's beginning, middle, and end. You're getting a full performance. I will see people at auditions with the wrong kind of music. They'll be like, um, like I could stay home every night, wait around for Mr. Right, take old showers every day. And they'll be like, oh, that's 16 bars. Right, okay, that is the vocal equivalent of literally this. Okay. You don't want to do the robot at your audition. You have to have a 16 bar cut that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you may have a great audition song, but that audition song may not be able to be cut into a great 16 bars, meaning you may have to have one great audition song and then another 16 bars. You want to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay, wrong key. It is so easy now to get the right keys. I, will, I seriously will play auditions where people are like, Touch me, it's so easy to leave. No, no, you cannot. It's gotta be in a key that makes your voice sound phenomenal. And if it's not in that key, transpose it or get another song. But you've got to do the right key. And by the way, you have to know what key your song is in. No joke, I was playing an audition for some chick and she was like, I do, I feel pretty, I'm four steps different. And I was like, four steps up or down? She's like, I think up. She actually went four steps down. So I was actually playing it, no joke, eight steps above where she wanted. Point is you have to know your key, but it's gotta be in the right key. And nowadays with the computer stuff, it is so easy to get the right key for your voice. Okay, third biggest mistake I would see. You've gotta pick a good song. You've gotta pick a good song. And the whole thing about overdone songs, it's not just like, that's so overdone. When you do an overdone song, it makes you seem very uncreative. I'll tell you what song you cannot do anymore. Aphrodite, don't forget me, Romeo and Juliet. Now, the only reason I know that song and have it memorized, well, besides the fact that I play for Sutton Foster, you can see our concert, SethTV.com. Besides that, it's because I played it for so many, so many women. I get it, we all wanna be Sutton Foster. I wanna be Sutton Foster. But do not sing that song in an audition because it's, it shows a very, it shows a lack of creativity. It shows like, I like the song, therefore I'm gonna sing it. When I was a kid growing up, I would go to the library, take out like musical scores and flip through them to find good audition songs. Now, by the way, this is like back in the 70s. So there was like maybe, you know, 25 years of great musical theater, 30 years of great musical theater. Now you have like 60 years of musical theater. There's so much music you can find. So you gotta do your research. Go to bluegobo.com, bluegobo.com. Go to YouTube and just explore all the musical theater options out there, but don't just stick for the song that everyone thinks is amazing. Back in the 80s, men, remember? No man, no madness. So no one was, no one was allowed to do that song past 1985 because everyone was doing it. But nowadays it's gimme gimme. Stop singing it! Get a new audition song. Okay, one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, this is interesting. Where do you look at an audition? Here's the dealio. Back in the day, and I mean back in the day, like before my time, people would audition in Broadway theaters. And when you're in a Broadway theater, you're, you know, you play, you play to the box seats. Old school, Brenda Braxton, who's always playing up here. You play to the balcony. But nowadays, people audition in rehearsal rooms. But so many people I know will sing above the auditioner's head, which is not good. Because what it is, it's cutting, it's cutting off your face emotionally from people seeing you. It's like a disconnect. Or there's the very few people that'll be like, I'm gonna look into the audition person's eyes and they'll sing their whole audition like this. Like, I'm not afraid, I'm gonna connect with you. And the person behind the table is like, actually, I don't wanna be doing scene work with you. I'm writing your audition notes on your headshot. Stop looking at me. So where do you look? What you do is pretend the people behind the table are an audience. Let's say they're like three people. I got this chick from Sarah Lazarus who teaches an amazing audition class, by the way. Let's say there's a person here, a person here. Look between, pretend there's another person there on their eye level. So you're looking in the eye level of the people at the table, but you're not literally looking in someone's eye and making them uncomfortable. So if you're up here and you're having all these emotions, disconnected from people over here. But if you're looking over here, you're on their eye level, they can see everything going on in your face. So that's another big mistake I see all the time. People playing it up here. I can't see you when you're up here. Who are you singing to? Anywho, okay, and finally, and I address a lot of stuff, but these are just like kind of the top five things that drive me cray cray. 
you've got to have a good ending. People behind the table, I hate to say it, but they're not always the brightest. People remember the last thing they hear. So you can't have an amazing audition song and then kind of have a clanky ending. And I see that all the time. People will do like the first ending, you know, like first ending, second ending. They'll do like the first ending. Like someone will be like, um, I'm flying high. Not really, they won't really sing this, but let's say they were like, I'm flying high, defying gravity. And they're sounding amazing. Defying gravity and you can't bring me down. No, it's so boring. So what it is is they're behind the table going like, oh my gosh, it sounds great, it sounds great. Oh, that ending. Now I'm depressed and bored. I don't even know why, but I'm having a visceral depressed action. Because the ending, the ending has got to be solid and sassafras. And I'm telling you, they really do remember the last thing. I was playing an audition. I think it was Lincoln Center, like in the 90s. And some girl was auditioning. She was not a good singer. And I remember she clanked on the last note. She was like, ah! But I was like, ah! And I was playing. And I was like... And they were like, beautiful. I'm like, beautiful? No, I was amazing. She sucked. But that's what they remember was the ending of the song. You've got to have a solid ending. Anyway, all of this is covered in my master class. So come visit me every Tuesday. And you can find out more about it at my website, sethtv.com. Peace out.